Five, sorry, five. She's working on the other three. She'll have them out tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and your blog is Everyday Paleo? Yeah, so check that out for sure too. So I'm gonna pass the mic over to Taylor. Taylor Collins runs uh, Epic Bar. He's a co-founder of that. And uh, he's gonna kind of co-host here with Sarah. So say, say hi to the world. We got the whole Hello world. everyone, I'm Taylor. I'm Sarah's sous chef today. Paleo sous chef. I think I, I think I might be on now. So thank you guys for hanging out. I'm super excited for you to be here with me. And more importantly, I'm really honored to be here. And I first saw Alan Savory speak in October. I'm from Chico, California, same as Chris, who you all know. And I went to his uh, conference back, like I said, in October. And I was so inspired. And although I am part of the paleo movement, what I feel like is lacking in the health food world is that we don't acknowledge enough the fact that we have to really be aware of where our food comes from. So I've actually been in this movement now for almost seven years, and I'm kind of the grandma of the paleo movement before. You would Google paleo or paleo diet, there'd be about five websites that would come up that had anything to do with food. Most of them were just dinosaurs. And I was like number three on the list. And now if you Google the word, the word paleo or paleo diet, you can really get lost out there in diet confusion land. So my message these days, it's really a strong, powerful one. It's that you need to take care of your body from the inside out. And I don't really care so much about what makes you feel good or what you want to eat or basically what your diet looks like. But what I want you to do is take control of your food source. So that's really important to me and why I'm so honored to be here today, because I feel like it's our responsibility as a consumer to just take that accountability and ask the question, what am I putting into my body and where does this food come from? And we heard from, uh, I can't remember his name, but the nice gentleman who spoke for Weston Price. And I really appreciated what he said about, really, it's the health of our soil that enriches the food that we're eating, not only the animals that eat the grass that we should be eating, but the vegetables that we're growing. So knowing who your farmers are, being aware of your food sourcing, it's, it's the root of what our health problems are stemming from, especially in the US. So, Seven years ago, I used to be a product of poor food choices, and not until I started to open my eyes to where the heck is my food coming from and what's happening to my body when I eat these foods was I able to really look outside the box, the, bo the package box of what I used to be eating and understand that I need to take control and I need to be accountable. However, cooking can be challenging. It's hard. Most people don't know how. So my mission in life is to make it easy for people. I have three kids. I own three businesses, I travel the world, I write books, but I still happen to be able to cook for my family. So we're gonna demonstrate today some really fast preparation of what I think is pretty, pretty gourmet, lamb. And this lamb was donated, like Chris said, and then I actually got the rest of these ingredients right here in London at the Borough Market. So we're cooking with bacon from ginger pig, um, from arugula, and the rest of the vegetables from a really nice organic farmer's market stand that I don't remember the name of. We have spices that were actually all put together by hand by a company called Spice Mountain here in London. So Taylor, you want to cook? I'm ready to cook. Okay, awesome. I met Taylor, gosh, how long has it been? Two years ago now? About two years, yes. And Taylor's doing awesome stuff. So if you guys haven't found out about Epic Bar, then check out Taylor. So here's what we're going to do. Come on over, Taylor. Do you cook often? Uh, as much as I can, yes. Okay, so we're gonna make drunken cauliflower. And I learned both of these recipes in Italy, and you can find them in my Italian cuisine book, because I love to cook with wine, and I like to drink wine too, shh, don't tell anyone. So what I want you to do is start with the butter. So we're gonna put butter right into that skillet. Oh, do you want a spoon? Here, that would help. So toss that butter in, and hopefully it's hot. I've been told that things can't smoke or the fire alarm's gonna go off. So this should be interesting. <laughs> if anything, we'll make it an exciting afternoon. It will be my fault. That's right. That's we'll blame Taylor. And then I'm going to have you add the garlic right to the butter. So we're using grass-fed butter, and we're using garlic that's just cut in half. So the way the Italians cook is they like to just season their oil with the garlic. Sometimes they use it minced. We're going to use that application in the next dish. But it's really a nice way to get that garlicky taste without having it be overpowered. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to actually add the bacon to the butter and the garlic. So we want to get that nice and browned. You got this, Taylor. 
Yeah, I'm familiar with cooking bacon. Oh, good. It's kind of awesome. A staple food in the, the paleo diet. So while you've got the bacon going, I'm going to start on the lamb. So we can kind of show you what it's like to complete an entire meal that's totally nutrient dense. You're using healthy fat, we're using grass fed meat, we're using loads of vegetables and spices, and we're going to have it done hopefully before whoever's back there tells me to get off stage. So in this pan, we're going to put more butter for the lamb. And while that melts, I'm going to season my lamb. Most important thing about being a home cook is to not be afraid of using seasoning because so often we're scared that we're going to either not do enough or do too much and we just blow it all together. So make sure that you use salt and that you're using good salt like pink Himalayan sea salt. You don't have to use as much as refined salt and that stuff is really bad for you. So you want to use the unrefined salt if you can find it. So I'm going to season my lamb chops or my lamb cutlets on both sides here. Come on, butter. Come on, butter. Oh no, it's smoking. <laughs> that'll, that'll get us out of here early, which I don't think any of us want to do, so I'm really hoping that I do not set off the smoke alarm. <laughs> it would be the, a first for me. Well, actually, that's not true. All right, so the lamb's going to go into the butter because we want to get that nice and brown on both sides. How's the baking? Delicious. Good. <laughs> so we're getting that right in. Okay. So back to the cauliflower, we're going to now add our wine. So I loved cooking in Italy because their measurements are very different than they are here. I remember cooking with one chef and I said, now how much wine did you put in? And he looked at me and he said, a glass. <laughs> so here, we'll put a glass of wine in. And we're going to let that reduce down just a little bit so it doesn't have this super strong flavor of wine, but it's going to add that acid to the dish that really complements the cauliflower. Same thing is going to go for the lamb as well, too. Okay, in my cooking tongs. So once we have this nice brown outside on the lamb, we're actually going to remove it from the pan. How's that doing over there? Bacon is very difficult to mess up. It really is hard to mess up, but bacon makes everything better. So people ask me, how did you get all of your culinary skills? And you know what? It's just about doing. And that's what I tell people all the time. You're not going to become a good cook unless you actually do it. So it's about experience that you have to get yourself from deciding to take charge of your health, which is, is, is exactly what I did and what I encourage other people to do as well. So I'm going to take the lamb out because we don't want it to be overcooked. I think lamb is kind of sinful if it's served anything but rare to medium rare. And then we're going to add the garlic and herbs to the butter. All right, stir that one. You're going to be multitasking now. Stir that one. And while Taylor stirs that up, I'm going to switch sides with you. And we're going to add our cauliflower to the wine and the bacon that's been reduced. In a perfect world, I'd have a lid, but I don't. So we're going to pretend that you put a lid on this for about five minutes, because that way it's really going to soak up the wine flavor. All right, so hands are completely acceptable utensils, by the way. That is hot. We're going to turn that down a little bit. OK. And now we're going to add wine to this little reduction that we have going on over here for the lamb. That's a good sound. You always want your pans to be hot. So often people will cook in a cold skillet and you don't get that sear on your meat. And you definitely lose flavor if you don't sear your meat first. So we're going to let that reduce down just a little bit. And then to the cauliflower, we're going to add our parsley and then fresh bay leaves to give it some flavor. So go ahead and stir that all in there, Taylor. I'm so glad you're up here helping. I'd be a complete wreck without you. All right, does that smell good out there? She could dominate. Right yes? OK, good. All right, so now that we've got this reduced down a little bit, I don't know if you guys can see that up on the camera or not, but we've cooked some of the alcohol content out of the wine, because I do feed my children this food. And although it's good for a bedtime snack when they're especially tired, you don't have to cook out the wine completely. <laughs> And then we're going to add the lamb back in, just to finish it off. What do you guys think? Is it looking decent on the screen up there? I'm so nervous that it doesn't look good. That's the most important thing. Food has to look great, right? OK, so now we're going to add a little bit of spice to our cauliflower. And I'm going to use dried chili flakes. So you can omit this if you don't want it spicy. But my family, we've traveled all over the world. We've been to Thailand. We've been to Italy. And we like it spicy. So I'm going to add a couple more pinches of the pepper flakes here. Here. All right, go ahead and stir that up. And then we're going to add some olive oil. And the Italians love to look, cook with olive oil. I, however, have a little bit of a reservation about cooking with, on high heat with olive oil because it tends to break down. 
So I like to finish my food with olive oil if I'm cooking an Italian themed dish, because then it doesn't lose the flavor either, and you get the benefits of the healthy fat that's in olive oil. So this is actually garlic infused olive oil, which is really yummy, and it's gonna add a little more flavor. So we're gonna drizzle about, oh, I don't know, a lot onto the cauliflower. It's about a quarter to a half a cup. Go ahead and mix that up. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil to the lamb just to finish that as well. So you can see the flavoring in each dish is similar, so it complements each other. But you got a little spice in this one and more fresh herbs in this one. So we have sage and rosemary and then the parsley in the cauliflower dish. So it comes together really nicely to complete the, complete the meal. And then we're gonna finish with a little bit of lemon pepper for a bit more acid. How's it look? Are you hungry? It's perfect, yes. Okay, and then a touch of salt. All right, I think we are ready to plate and taste. So before you serve anyone food, the number one secret to being a good cook is to taste your food before you serve it. Because if it doesn't taste good to your palate, it's very unlikely that it's gonna taste good to your families or to your friends. So always, always make sure that it tastes good to you before you put it on the plate. Okay, so we've turned the heat off, no smoke alarms, high five, <laughs> thank goodness. And let's do this up. So I like to make my food look pretty. Obviously we did this in just a few minutes, which is I think pretty impressive for a rather gourmet meal of grass-fed lamb and organic cauliflower. So I'm gonna put it right on top of this bed of arugula. And you can do this for each plate. Even your kids will appreciate more food, when, or the food that you cook for them if it looks nice. So I'm putting that here. I keep wanting to grab that mic and cook with it. That would be really interesting. Okay, we're gonna use our cooking tongs and we're gonna put our lamb down on the arugula. Will you move the spoon off that plate? We're gonna put some on there too. Because we've got plenty. Awesome, now you know what it's like to be John. Like, get me this, yes. get me that. Okay, my husband is John, who is amazing and my helper. And uh, the only reason I can do any of this. Okay, now we're gonna use the sauce from the lamb. Oh my gosh, I don't wanna burn you. Maybe put the plate down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're gonna use the sauce that we just made to pour over the lamb. And I love using a warm dressing like this on arugula because it kind of breaks down the lettuce a little bit and it brings out more flavor, the peppery flavor, and it's less bitter. So you can use it kind of as a salad and a garnish. You don't wanna miss any of that yummy, delicious, healthy fat. And now we're gonna put the cauliflower right next to it. That looks perfect, by the way. And when you're cooking vegetables, in my opinion, it's kind of a crime to make them really mushy. So I do steam vegetables every now and then, but you just wanna make sure you get them right to where they're al dente, rather than mash. Unless you're making something like mashed cauliflower, then that's okay. But for this particular dish, to have a little bit of crunch to it, have that, having that texture just makes it more palatable and it actually retains some of the flavor too, which is nice, because vegetables really do have flavor. Once you get the processed foods out of your diet, you realize how good vegetables actually taste. So we're gonna put some cauliflower right next to it here. And this is a lot of food. So whoever ends up trying and eating this is a lucky person. And there's the finished dish. Okay, we'll do one more. Is there a volunteer in the audience who would like to come up here with Taylor and try the lamb? We got a little, little sweetheart yeah, right here in the front. Couple, but I know, I was gonna say, I wasn't gonna actually offer this, but there's so <laughs> few of you here that <laughs> that we can actually taste this. Okay, so here is the prepared dish. Come on up, Taylor, come on over. You're gonna have to be um, the guinea pigs here and let me know what you think. Come on up. All right, here you go. What's your name, sweetheart? Amelia. Amelia, here you go. And I can help you if you want me to. It's probably really hot. That's the problem. Here, oh, actually, yeah, here we go. So why don't I cut a piece for you? And then you can try. Oh, and of course I don't have a knife. Yeah, that's okay. You, of course, everyone needs a knife. Everyone needs a knife. We're going to make this happen one way or another. Here we go. That's how the Philippines... Okay, I have an idea. How about if you try the cauliflower? <laughs> uh, I need spice. Oh, because of the spice. Man, I'm really striking out here. All right. Taylor, you want to go for it? Um, if someone can come up with a knife, I would be like the happiest Sarah Fragoso on the planet. 
Oh, I see someone running in the back. It's pretty easy oh, to cut with a fork. There you go. It shouldn't be tender enough. I think I just got a part that wasn't. Amelia, you want to try this piece of lamb? There you go, right there. Yay. I'm going to turn this off because I am going to end up putting the smoke alarm off. Does anyone have any questions since there's, I think, a few minutes left before we have to wrap up? Chris is looking at his watch here. We're good. So if anybody has any questions, I'd love to answer them. 10 out of 10. Yay! Domination. <laughs> 10 minutes? Okay, great. Wow. I was really nervous that we weren't going to have enough time, so I'm very grateful. How is it? Tasty. The it's lamb is really good. It's delicious. Yay! <laughs> so, yes, more feedback. It is delicious. Yes. But. <laughs> Always uh, that but. Kind of at the end, it is kind of dry, but it's yeah. very, very good. Oh, wow. I don't know who this little person belongs to, but we have a culinary yeah. genius in the works right here. Yes, good job, Mom. I have one of those, too. My 10-year-old son, Jaden, will critique everything that I do. And I'm like, son, it's scrambled eggs. It's 6 a.m. Just eat them. So no, I, But it's great, though. I think really getting your family involved is kind of the missing link, especially in the generation that we're raising now, where kids often don't understand where food actually comes from. And most often they think that it just arrives in a box or you go through a drive through and it ends up in front of them when they get home at night. So trying to bring the family back to the dinner table I think is a really huge important step in solving a lot of the health problems that we have right now, especially back home in the United States. We have this culture that really is lacking. We don't have much of a culture. And that's been my experience when I travel to other countries where I see that people really have a rich food culture that we're lacking. So in the international cuisine books that I've written, I've tried to bring back that real deep love for food and why families should celebrate food together and why they should be cooking together rather than finding food around the corner from the nearest store or the nearest drive through So it's really what I'm passionate about doing and spreading that word and spreading that message. If I can even have one family that I know start going to their local CSA, Community Supported Agriculture, or shopping at their farmer's market, or hooking up with their local grass-fed beef farmer, and in fact, the grass-fed beef farmer in Chico that I support, she actually learned all of her skills and the way that they do their farm now from Joel Salatin, which I would love to meet him here today and tell him thank you because my beef tastes really amazing and I know where it's coming from and I'm proud of that thanks to him. So those messages, I think, really need to be driven home to our children. We need to take accountability and responsibility for sourcing our own food, even if it's growing your own herbs in your little planter box, having your own garden. We live on one acre and we have our own chickens in our backyard. And our backyards never looked better, by the way. It was like a big, vacant, dry lot. And now that our chickens are out there eating the bugs and doing what they do and scratching around, we have our eggs, we have a wonderful garden. And this is all something that you can do on one acre of land. So really supporting what Alan Savory is doing. I'm so excited to be here. And thank you guys again very much for watching our cooking demonstration. And Taylor, thank you for making sure that I didn't burn anything and that it all turned out well. Anytime, you did fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> so Taylor, why don't you tell us a little bit about what it is that, um, that you're doing at Epic, because we're going out live on the web stream too. So um, just give a little rundown of what you're doing, since we didn't capture you in the breakout yesterday, and then what you're doing with Savory Institute and our partnership and how that works. OK. Um, That's awesome. So Sarah kind of introduced herself as the grandmother of this movement in the United States. And I say she's more of the Alan Savory of this movement in the United States. So she's a pretty big deal. This is cool. Um, I'm more of a young buck. I've been around <laughs> for, yeah, a young stud buck. I've, I've been around for a year and a half. Um, my company's called Epic Bar. And essentially what we do is my wife and I, we feed our family like this. For us, um, kind of the golden rule of food is feed others as you wish to be fed. So this is, I mean, this is how I eat every night and how I, you know, this is how I identify food. Um, this is food that our ancestors recognize as food as we have evolved as species to um, relate to food and consume food and digest food. Um, but my company, when I'm traveling or if I'm exploring in the back country or racing, uh, it's very hard to prepare or find really high quality, nutrient dense, grass-fed animal protein and other whole foods. And so my company, Epic Bar, we, we produce a shelf stable protein bar that's made with grass-fed animal meat and then we combine dehydrated fruit and nuts and then we cook it and we package it and it's super convenient, uh, grab and go item. So when, when you can't do this, this is always 
first and foremost, real food, real fresh, nothing tops this. But if you're on an airplane flying to London, you might not want to smell up the place with lamb. Um, and so you can eat an epic bar and it's really nice. And I have to add to that that we need to support people like Taylor and what he's doing because as a mother of three children, I need a hundred of you with products like that for the times when I'm not at home and I'm cooking because we do travel a lot. And it's really hard and sad and frustrating that as a consumer who is aware of what her food should look like and what I want to feed my children, that there's not enough options out there for when there is no time to cook because our lives are inconvenient and we've made it that way because we're busy and we're stressed and we have a lot going on. So not only is my message, yes, you've got to slow down a little bit and make your priority your health first and let everything else come into play after that. But there are moments where you need to be able to source food that's convenient and that tastes good and that nourishes your body. So thank you, Taylor, for doing what you do. And like I said, we need way more of you out there <laughs> with more product. But yes, yay, that's good. Good news. <laughs> and, and I want to take a second and point out um, the quality of the, the special speakers that we have here. Uh, Taylor has a, a large scale operation. Their bars go to the entire national Whole Food Network in the United States. And they continue to keep quality at the highest standard. And they buy truly regional beef. Uh, 100 percent grass fed, use all whole muscle when they make their, their animal meat protein bars, and they're looking to find as much of it as holistically managed source as they can. So uh, they're working with us and we continue to help them find suppliers to grow that, and they continue to point customers back to us uh, to support the movement. So it's been a very mutually beneficial relationship and we're just so excited about what you're doing. Uh, Sarah is just amazing. I mean, the number of books that she puts out, the gym that her and her husband run, uh, and has the same message, continuing to make it regional scale, uh, really high quality, and let's build that food democracy. Let's get to know our farmers. When you know your farmer and you can shake their hand, they can tell you what their needs are and you can tell them what your needs are and we can cut out all the middlemen. You save money, they make more money. It just makes sense. We need to start doing this. So the more that we can build this into our system, the more we can build it into our lifestyle. Initially, I know it feels a little less convenience and we talk a lot about price point, but really for most of the developed world, convenience is the bigger factor. There's a reason we call it fast food and not cheap food. It's because we're looking for convenience. So there's some culture that needs to change there and there's also some ways that we need to develop the food system to build some convenience in there. So let's continue to make that happen. But you as consumers, as much as you can continue to reach out to the farmers in your region uh, and work with them directly, the better the whole world gets. And when we go hiking, when we go traveling, let's eat Epic Bars. When we're at home, let's use Sarah's cookbooks because they're amazing and the food is delicious. She really is very, very, uh, her book is like the Bible of paleo, so uh, everyday paleo book. So thank you guys. We're going to wrap this session up and then right after this, we're going to come back and we're going to have the butchery demo in here. So this is time to use the restrooms and, uh, and grab a quick water or anything like that. So thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you.